apparently it's just that time of year again where somebody, somewhere, decides to be abusive and negligent, idiotic, ignorant and cruel all in one fell swoop. And not just somebody, but somebody in a position of power. Somebody who touts the slogan, power to the creators. I am of course talking about the largest network on YouTube, full screen, because recently there's been a bit of a situation involving those wonderful people and Hatesry Hatesry Productions. Now I'd like to start this off saying I hope this gets resolved. Shit, I'd hope this actually gets resolved before this video even goes live. Truly, I would, because this, this isn't solely about this incident. It presents the opportunity to put a magnifying glass up to the problem at hand, but it isn't solely about it. But to explain the situation for anybody that's unaware, from the very beginning, Fullscreen put a copyright claim on uh, Hatery Hatery Productions' most popular video. Now, that's not a malicious thing, it's just happened to be a video that was successful because it showcased a creator who, well, I don't like him, but that really doesn't matter. It's a prankster video, and Hatery Hatery was making fun of them. It made a parody of it. It essentially critiqued it in a not so kind way, because I don't know why you would, because as said, the content at hand was stupid, but that's neither here nor there, I'm not here to talk about preference of what the hell we watch on YouTube, if we were we'd be here all fucking day. So again, they put a copyright claim on the most popular video because it involved one of their creators. Sounds justifiable, sounds reasonable, and in some world, in some way, it would be, but unfortunately we do live in a world where fair use exists, and when I say unfortunately, I mean thank fuck for that fortunately, because if we didn't we'd be in a hell of a mess, wouldn't we? Where content creators are silenced and can't critique people without the ever-present danger and risk of their channel being taken away from them because of a flawed copyright strike system on YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that that's not the situation? Oh, that's exactly the fucking problem we're in despite the fact that fair use exists. Because fair use protects critique. Because if you didn't, how would you ever know that the latest box office smash was in fact a box office shit and you shouldn't watch it because it is literally the drizzling shit? If, if fair use didn't exist, these reviews wouldn't exist and people would just have glowing reviews everywhere and we'd all be misled. An extreme example, but that is why fair use exists and it bleeds over into YouTube where we're able to review games, critique games and parody things and songs and the manner of things. That's why it exists. And despite that, we find ourselves right here and right now in a situation where somebody parodying a piece of content has found their work with a copyright claim. Now, a copyright claim can evolve into a rather large problem because that can result in a copyright strike should it progress in the wrong direction. And you get three of those and your channel's gone. And when you consider the fact that, for example, my line of work, you cover a game, you make three episodes on just one game, and the developer, publisher, or person involved in that game decides they don't like it, they can just strike all three of those, and in the blink of an eye, when you are sleeping comfortably at night, your channel has disappeared. And when I say disappeared, I mean it's been fucking destroyed. It isn't as if it's unavailable, it's just gone. Now, I explain that because that is the extreme of the situation. Because at the very beginning, it was just a simple claim, which made it so any revenue generated from that video went to full screen and not H3H3. And fun fact, they are not the biggest channel, and when their most viewed video just happens to essentially fall out of their hands and into the hands of someone who really doesn't need that money, then it can be rather devastating because I. As of the situation they've explained, they are barely making enough money to just get by, but they do it because they love it and have a passion for it. I'm not here to sell them to you, but just an explanation of the situation. So naturally, they disputed that claim. They disputed it justifiably because, as said, fair use exists. And the claim should not be there at all. And Fullscreen responded by making the video unavailable, <laughs> which, which essentially translates to, well, if, if, you, if we can't have it, then no one can. So, now it's unavailable. It isn't deleted. I word that specifically. Because if they were to, again, dispute or fight back and argue that point, then Fullscreen could get back to them by deleting the video. Which is... kind of terrible when you consider the fact that this is a video they worked on, and 
took a long time to get the views that it did, which resulted in it being as popular as it is, and would continue to climb the ladder of popularity. I explain that simply because if they were to delete it, and this would then get resolved, and then they uploaded it, it likely would not regain the momentum it had, and wouldn't be as valuable to them. I know I'm explaining that to you as if it's a business asset, but that is what this is. Whether you love it, or you do it because of the money, regardless, the money is what keeps you alive and well with a roof above your head. This is why it's critical to them, because it kind of evolved. The situation got much worse after that, because if it wasn't bad enough that their most viewed video had the ads turned off, and then just became unavailable altogether, full screen wasn't quite done there. I mean, they didn't react quite that soon, because first, H3H3 went out of their way to make a video to explain the situation. I mean, just simply on the way this service works, it's understandable that a content creator would explain why some of their content has disappeared. Now, the video in question you can still watch because, thankfully, the copyright monster can't get to that one. There's a force field around it because they didn't use any of full screen's partner's content. Again, even if they did, fair use, I've explained that, but hey, apparently fair use doesn't exist. It's, it's the fucking child's imaginary friend to these people, so e either way. You can still watch that and they can explain the situation a little bit calmer, surprisingly. I'm not involved, but I'm <laughs> a little bit more pissed off, or at least visibly. I imagine he's fucking seething, but he opted not to um, show that because he has more restraint. Ironic, given his on-screen character. But anyway, that video was made. They explained the situation, and a short time later, full screen opted to uh, claim other videos, and the same situation pretty much evolved from the previous video. It's just, hey, no ads for you, money for us, thanks for coming and doing all the hard work for us. Again, the money generated from those videos is a drop in the fucking ocean to full screen, but they did it for the simple sake of shoving it to people that they didn't like because they made content that they didn't appreciate. And if you thought the situation ended there, it didn't. No, it certainly didn't, because then, the network that H3H3 does work with, it isn't full screen, th they decided to um, side with the full screen and turn all of the advertisements on H3H3 Productions videos off. Every single one, past, present, future, I imagine. So, now a job, a passion that they fought for, because you kind of have to in this, it's rather difficult to get to the point where you're able to live off of it. Never mind comfortably. Just because PewDiePie makes several million dollars a year doesn't mean we do. I say we because we've actually got similar channel sizes. I imagine we make similar amounts of money. I don't know, can't speak for it, just an, an assumption. <laughs> Which is a fuck up, but still. So, now their job is not a job. It's just something they seemingly do for fun because they can no longer make money off of it because full screen rules with an iron fist. They don't own YouTube, but because of the copyright strike system, they fucking might as well, because anything they don't like, they can get rid of, with little to no dispute. I mean, what's the content creator gonna do? Argue the point home and say, no, this this is under fair use. You, you, you shouldn't be able to copyright claim this. This is bullshit. That's exactly what people do. And nothing changes because... <laughs> How long has YouTube been around? You can Google that. I know the answer, but it doesn't matter. It's been around for a long time, hasn't it? It's gone through many updates. Mostly pointless homepage changes. Some video UI alterations. Some algorithm search engine things. You know, some actual meaningful changes. But you know, you know what hasn't changed? The copyright claim system. The copyright strike system. The flawed, archaic, and bloody dinosaur-like system we have in place that pretty much makes content creation a difficult thing to do. Because as much as you can make fun of it and say you just play games for a living if you're to aim it at me or a Let's Player, there's more to it than that, but let's just fucking go with it. Let's say that's true. Let, let's, let's say we just play games for a living. Well, if we just do that and that's so easy, we have to consistently evade, dodge and avoid, and hope and pray for the best that we don't end up with three strikes on our asses because it's just, it's just as simple as a one indie game developer 
one insane individual that has no true concept of reality and no idea what criticism is or what the fucking free market stands for and what criticism is for, or reviews, or I'm getting to a point, I promise. Someone as simple as that, and while I do like indie game developers, I'm nowhere knocking them, but in the grand scheme of things, the arguably insignificant indie game developer, when you put it up to a network the size of fucking Fullscreen, even they can do this. Jim fucking Sterling's son had to endure the lunacy of digital homicide. I... I'd love to explain that to you, but... <laughs> it's a lot more fun if you just watch the videos that still exist, thank god. I'll go, go watch them. Pause this. I'm mad. Go watch something funny. That's funny. As much of a serious situation as it is, that's... painfully hilarious for many reasons. But mainly... It's a real fucking knee slapper because somebody as idiotic and crazy and as said in the grand scheme of things insignificant is able to do something like that. Issue out copyright strikes and claims to silence criticism, things they don't like, and that can destroy jobs. Hey, let's rewind further and go back to the bigger corporation, say Sega. If you were a fan of Shining Force back in the day and you wanted to cover it on your channel, shit, there was probably plenty of people that did that, right? Well, if you looked for it now, they prob you probably wouldn't find any. No, you probably wouldn't. So it was a bit of a debacle where um, Sega decided to just... Oh... Delete all the videos they could that involved Shining Force. Why? Was it a breach of intellectual property? Was was it some kind of invasion of their content? Was it was it something mischievous and horrible? N no, no, actually, they um, they just wanted the search rankings for their videos that were going to come out to be higher. <laughs> no, that's it. No, no, that's really it. It's the equivalent of cutting off of the legs of everybody in a sack race because you want to fucking come first. Because it wasn't just, all oh, the videos are gone, no, because if, I said, if you do multiple videos that, in, in, that belong to a developer, but with your person, that's it, goodbye, channel gone, and that happened. To many people. To many people! Even Total Biscuit was affected. Minorly, thank god, but, hmm, that happened. And there are countless examples. A channel, yourmoviesucks.org, or YMS. <sighs> Also, is regularly affected, and it's stupid, because fair use exists, and no policy, no law, no thing has ever been properly updated to translate it to YouTube, despite the fact it is clearly a translatable... thing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Piece of paper, wording, legislature, I don't fucking know. Fair use is a thing, and it is translatable to this medium and others. But the people that have the copyright strike claim system at their disposal act as if it isn't, act, act as if it doesn't, act as if it doesn't exist at all and it's no problem at all. And they just run rampant and they're able to do this, because here's the fun fact. We are the content creators, we are the people that make money for the site, the network and everybody involved including ourselves. It's not a selfless thing, but we are the people that make money for others including. So, you'd think there'd be a little bit more support for us, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd think there'd be a little bit more protection, you'd think there'd be a little bit more logic implemented into this. Because I understand the copyright strike system. I understand why it's there. People would upload full fucking movies, films, and everything on here. That's why it exists. At a basis, re-uploads of content. Stuff like that. It makes sense. But then... People can abuse it. When I say can, I mean do. People do. People have. People will. People will continue to do so unless something changes. Because nothing has. The homepage, a million different iterations. The sub box, a million different ways to not work. The comment section, a million different ways to link to viruses. But... <laughs> copyright strike system? No. no. That doesn't need changing. Of course it doesn't. Why would YouTube care? There are plenty more content creators out there, right? I mean, we lose a couple, a couple more will come up in a few years. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep making money off the popular ones. We'll protect those upper echelon motherfuckers and look down on everybody else. For example, Somebody who went out of their way to fight this was Angry Joe. He could be a managed channel, because you can either be managed or affiliated, I believe is the lingo. If it isn't, whatever. Protected, not protected. There you go. You can have a copyright condom, or you can't. That's, that's, there you go. There's a translation, so I'm not using the wrong words. And I, I believe he has the opportunity to have that now, to have that copyright condom and be, pr pr be protected from all the fucking STIs of this stupid site and the developers and publishers and insane people just 
trying to delete anything that they don't like, but he chose not to. So he could endure the same shit as anybody else that just doesn't quite meet the criteria for being this upper echelon. So he's been doing that for a long time and he's been suffering under it just like everybody else has. And you know, despite him doing that and voicing the problems and making them known and showing it to everyone, nothing's changed. Nothing has, to the point where, as said, H3H3 Productions, all of their videos are no longer monetized. The job that they fought to actually get is now gone. Again, I'd like to think this is resolved before I've even uploaded this, and if it isn't, I'd like to think that it will be. But the realist and pessimist in me is saying that it probably fucking won't be. Because... why would it be? In the grand scheme of all this YouTube stuff, who cares? PewDiePie's still making YouTube a whole bunch of money. Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, all those people with millions of subscribers, they're, they're still there, they're still relatively protected for the most part. I'm not saying they're immune because they're not, a fuck-up is a fuck-up, but sometimes it happens. This isn't me even being mad at them for clarification. This is the way the people behind the scenes seemingly view it. I don't know, maybe I'm insane and paranoid. Who knows, maybe I'm just projecting. But the way it seems is as long as there are a bunch of people making people money, it doesn't matter if... People like h 3 h 3 and Your Movie Sucks and everybody else just, you know, gets the boots, just ram down their throat every now and then. The hot poker to the ribs, it just doesn't matter. Who gives a shit if their jobs are gone? Who cares about the individual and the collective is fine? <sighs> but it isn't fine. And it really, really pisses me off. And sometimes it just makes me sad, because I feel like there's nothing we can do and it's gonna be like this forever and nothing's gonna change. And, you know, again, me being me, it'd probably get worse. I assume it'll get worse, because, fuck it, why wouldn't it, right? I mean, remember, remember when the automated system came in, and then people just abused it? People with no true ownership of anything just came in with sweeping strikes and claims to try and make a, a hot book of other people's work? Do you remember that? Did you forget? I think you did. I almost fucking did. It's a massive problem that happened, but uh, it's, in, it's in the past. Who cares that a giant site such as YouTube had such a glaring fucking flaw that any parasite leech and piece of shit could just come in and make money while doing nothing, with no real repercussions, with no real consequences? Because that's a point I may have glossed over and didn't fully finish. We're the content creators that make the money and we get no real protection. We don't. Some do, most don't. Most don't. And if we don't actually fuck up, but some copyright dinosaur perceives it as such, we're fucked. One way or another, our most popular video no longer belongs to us, and the revenue goes to someone else. Our most popular video is deleted, our entire library of content is unmonetized, our job has become a fucking hobby again. Now I don't say that as if to say, I don't enjoy what I do, I love what I do, but the whole point is that you fought to make it your living, your livelihood, your passion is your job. You fight for that, and it can be taken away by people so easily. Because while we are under constant scrutiny to not make a mistake, God knows what some of the mistakes are. As said, H3H3's video was completely fine under every rule and regulation, but they just didn't like it, so it's gone. So, we're under constant scrutiny making the money, meanwhile, any individual that owns any intellectual property that we use, again, under fair use, is not under any scrutiny, isn't supervised, isn't monitored, they can just come and go as they please, claim whatever the fuck they like for no real rhyme or reason, and then, hey, sorry, we weren't allowed to do that, that, that was our mistake, here. After a week or a month or god knows how long of this fuck up, please, have your videos back. It was a misunderstanding. And they go back on with their day as if nothing happened. There's no consequence for them doing that shit. There's no consequence for the people actually making the mistakes and actually going out of their way to destroy livelihoods, whereas uh, we are punished for mistakes we haven't even made. Huh. It's almost as if the copyright strike system is terrible. That's not a secret, that's not a revelation, that's not a headline, that's not news. Most people that are aware of it know that. And anybody that's barely aware of it probably knows that. At least, you know, in my flawed, biased opinion. We content creators 
train ourselves and try to do our best to understand the medium and every hurdle, every obstacle, every potential fuck up, every fit, every pitfall, every danger, risk and hazard. We, we do our best to educate ourselves on that, believe it or not. We educate ourselves and try to understand the tools we are given and we fucking fight to even get them in the first place. You don't apply for this job and then just get given 100,000 subscribers and then are told to go off and do your thing. You fight for it for god knows how long. In my case, four years, but it's not about me because I was terrible for those first three. So it doesn't matter. It's not the point. We content creators fight for the tools and do our best to figure out how the fuck to use them and understand them so we don't use them the wrong way and screw ourselves over. <sighs> but this copyright strike system is a pretty intricate and troublesome tool. Kind of difficult, knowing all the rules and how, it's, how it works under fair use and how it should be applied properly, but it is just put in the hands of a fucking chimp fresh out of the Congo with a nice clean serving of fecal matter still drenched in their hands and they're told to just have fun with it. Or at least that's the way it seems to be, because... <laughs> Somebody who was given the copyright claim tool thought that fair use involved critiquing his game fairly. I'm not fucking kidding. <laughs> I wish that I was. So, yeah. To summarise, to recap, to end this so it's all crystal clear for the two people that are still listening to this shit. Full screen, with their power to the creators motto, can use their power to take our power and money and jobs away. So, here's to hoping H3H3 Productions gets their channel back to the way it was, gets their video back, gets their job back, gets their smile back. Here's to hoping this isn't an issue in a short while. I'd like to think this is the fucking monumental tragedy, utmost catastrophe, and astounding fuck-up that forces change. But odds are... <laughs> it'll... It'll just be another corpse for the pile. And it'll just keep on growing. <laughs>